We are recording already. We are going to be here, I hope, at least or at most 40, 50 minutes, you know, no more. Because I see that the meetings in English 6 are pretty long and large, you know? So, yeah. Well, we're going to start first asking a few questions about the brain. You guys know the brain is the organ that controls the body, uh, about the body. So that's the brain. That's in my opinion, it is the most important organ of our body. Of course, there are many, you know, 100% of the organs are important because they have their function, but the brain is the most important in this case. So whatever you do, yes. whatever you do depends on the brain, you know? Uh, okay, so, uh, all right. Now let's talk about the brain. In how many parts is the brain divided? In how many parts? You have to raise your hands if you know. You can raise your hand on Zoom, you know? <clears throat> how many parts does the brain have, Samuel? <clears throat> Three parts. Sorry. Yeah, so we have, sorry about what is killing me. So yeah, the brain has two parts. And let me see who knows the names of those parts. What are the names of the parts of the brain? The two parts, the big two parts that Samuel says. One is uh, central law. Central law. Yeah, but you said two parts, Samuel? You said two parts? Three parts, I said. Oh, God, now it's three. And I mean, uh, and I mean one. Oh, no, okay. Now let's see what Noraima says. Noraima, what do you say? Uh, the, <laughs> the brain is divided in two parts. Okay. Hemisferio derecho y hemisferio izquierdo, si no okay. me equivoco. So Noraima says is right hemisphere and left hemisphere. Yes. Those are the two bigger parts of the brain, right? Because we know that within those two parts, there are more parts, right? You guys saw that on the test. So I'm not going to explain that. Now, so we have, we can call it this way. The brain has two parts the right part and the left part. We know that they are called hemispheres, okay? But each part is in charge of something, you know? So when I say something, I mean the functions, the functions, they are in charge of something different. So what, what is the, the left side in charge of? Let's see if someone knows. Guys, we're talking about the homework, the brain. I gave you, uh, I hope so, I gave you a few questions about the brain. And what I'm doing now is just asking about what you read. If you read it, of course. So nobody knows. The question is, hold on, uh, what am I? Here I am. Give me a second here. Mm, what is my whiteboard? Okay, wait. Here it is. Okay, so the right side of the brain is in charge of what? Sorry about that, what? Yeah, let's see now. I guess you guys don't know, huh? Yeah, well, guys, you need to read, you need to read 
the homework because if you don't do it, then you're gonna have problems. We are going to have exams and whatever I, whatever I give you about classes, right, is gonna be on the exam. Uh, it's, it's not gonna be everything, but I'm gonna make sure that something from each thing that we teach will be on the exam, so be careful. Leandro, what do you say? Yeah, so teacher, uh, the right one is in charge of the colors, feelings, mm -hmm. and long-term. Memory. Yeah. Right. So yes, the right side of the brain, Leandro says, is in charge of colors, you know, feelings, and the long-term memory. You know what happens? Like, the long-term memory is where you, where you place things that you don't forget right away, that you keep it for months, for years, for decades, right? For example, uh, Samuel, since when do you know that your name is Samuel? Since when? Since I, since I have memory. Since you have memory, right? Yes. Samuel, how many times have you forgotten your name? Never. Never, right? Because that is yes. memory, you don't forget it, right? Okay, but look at this. When, I don't know if, some, if someone have lied to you guys or say something that is not true, you know? Like do, making a story, like something that is not true. Like for example, uh, if you had a girlfriend and the girlfriend cheated on you or the boyfriend cheated on you, or you suspected that something wrong was going on and you ask the person, what's going on here? And the person says, no, you know, and then you discover that it was yes. You don't forget about that. You always remember that, you know? Because that, yeah. that, that um, created a feeling and you don't forget feelings, you know? Your, your, your first kiss. Right. You don't forget you see? Right. And well, I don't know if you guys know what a candle is. A candle is when, when there is no electricity, right? We light up a candle, a wax candle, fire, okay? Uh, why is it that you guys don't put your hands on fire? Why do you think that people don't put hands on fire? <laughs> uh, what, do you, what do you think, Santo? Why is it that people? Because, because they, 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 they can, they can they're gonna get burned. Huh? Burn. They're gonna right. get burned. Right, but look. This is my experience. I don't know if you have little brothers, sons and daughters, you know, little family, like small family, like, you know, the babies over there, you know that you're gonna get burned if you put your hands on fire. But babies, they don't know that. And you can tell the baby, don't put your hands over there because you're gonna get burned. The baby doesn't understand what you say. Then when the baby puts the hands on fire, gets burned, and, and, and he or she experienced that feeling, they're not gonna put hands back again. You know why? Because they felt it. And feelings allocate on the right part or the right side of your brain and they don't do it again. You know, that's what happens. Now, you're gonna discover something very important today about Dominican people. Okay, we're well, gonna learn something. If you live in this country, you will see why we are like that. Uh, in the next question, you are going to see uh, what happens. The next question was almost the same as the first one. So the, the left side of the brain, the left side is in charge of what? Let's put it here, you know. The second one, so we're gonna put the left in here. Left side of the brain is in charge of what? What is it, what it controls? 
because now we know that the right side controls feelings, emotions, um, colors, and also the long-term memory. But what about the left side? What, what do you say there, um, Noraima? The, le the left side of the brain teacher controls the movements. Movements? What else? I don't know. Well, but it was there on the text. You didn't read the text. No, I just I just know You're... that because I, I know it and that's it. Oh, I see. I see. I don't know if someone else besides okay, I see, I see a person here. I see it. Okay. Uh I'm gonna give it to Leandro. What do you say? Okay, that the right one is the uh, the contrast to the left one, like uh -huh. the short term memory. Short term memory. Okay, let me give me a sec here. Let me yeah. Let me put it here. This is gonna be um, very quick. Hold on. Okay, now now yes. So you said short term memory, right? Yes, what else, Leandro? You know what else? It's in, it's for remembering things that like fast, like, a, oh my God, I forgot it. <laughs> right, don't worry, Samuel is gonna give you a hand. Samuel, what do you say? Besides short term memory, what, what else? Sure. This is not in the in the in the in the in the book, but I listened that I heard that the in the brain, mm -hmm. the the right side, the right side. If you are writing, yes, your your information. I if you are right-handed, if you write yeah. with the right-handed, the information is uh, for send the the brain to the, the hand is in the left hemisphere. Oh, if okay. Are, if you are left, lefty, your mm -hmm. information, the, the caption is in the, the right no. hemisphere. Yeah, that's true. It's like a X. Yeah, that's true, that's true, that's right. So nobody else, nobody else knows what else we have for the left side because Samuel said the right one. He gave a general opinion. Look, guys, if you don't raise your hand, like, yes, Annabelle, I will give you the, 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 the opportunity. If you guys don't raise the hands, I'm just going to continue and finish quick. It's going to be faster and easy for me. Um, then the day of the exam, you guys will know what you have to do. Nor, uh, Annabelle, what do you say? Anna Bell. I guess Annabelle is not there. Uh, she's having problems with the audio. What do you say, Danny? Okay, hello, hello to everybody hey. here. So what I could read is that the, the left side of the brain deals with rules, with list of information, the short memory term, and, uh, and the memories used to remember like telephone numbers uh, that are very long and then things like that. And okay. about the other one, can I say that about the, the right one or just this one? The left one is okay, don't worry. Okay, that's what yeah. I could read. Yeah, very good, that's right, that's right. So uh, mainly the left side is in charge of the short-term memory, right, the rules, and also the list of information. Look, Dominicans, we, we work with the left side of our brain. For example, the semaphores, the traffic lights, right? You see that everybody takes the traffic light. Nobody re respects the traffic lights. Although they give them a ticket, if the Ahmed stop you and give you a penalty, a ticket, people still continue doing so, stealing. 
the traffic light. You know why? Because that's a rule. Look, that's a rule. You cannot take the red light. You got you have to, to wait, right? But people normally forget because that's a rule. And that's right, that's the purpose of the existence of Ahmed in this country. Ahmed, you know the police, the traffic police. That's right. Yes. Did you have the headache is uh it begins in the in the brain, the headache. The headache. Sometimes when yes. You mean if the is brain if when you have a headache, is your brain that hurts? Is that what you mean? Yes, I have this this question. I don't know. Now you believe I am a doctor, right? <laughs> Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I don't really know because what happens is that the, the body is very complex. Sometimes there is a part of your body that hurts okay. and it is reflected here on the head, on the brain. So we don't know, you know, so we will have to ask a, a, a doctor that works with neuro. Because we, we, we do have a pain in your, in your body. The, the first feeling is in the brain. Yes, because then the brain sends the information back to you to let you know where it is that it hurts. So the brain feels first. Let me see who's writing, hold on. Okay. Don't worry, Manuela, that's okay. All right, guys, so that's it. That's about the brain, you know? How heavy is the brain? How heavy? Do you guys know how heavy the brain is? Heavy when we're talking about. Uh, Santo. Maybe Santo is not there. heavy is the brain? Well, I guess Santo is not there. What do you say, Albania? Uh, teacher, it's 2.2. 2.2. Yes, like one kilo. Yeah, 2.2 pounds. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true, that's true. So the brain is not heavy, you know? The brain yeah. is not heavy, 2.2 I didn't find I didn't find a word, I didn't, I didn't find a word to, to turn out, to turn on the, the microphone. <laughs> you were talking, but the microphone was off. Oh, I see. It was <laughs> oh my <Yeah>. goodness. <laughs> yeah. So that's how heavy the brain is. 2.2 .2 pounds, one kilo, you know, not very heavy. So yeah, that's the brain. There are people that have bigger brain than others. That depends on the uh, uh, complexity of your body, but that's the normal measurement, the measure for that. All right, so that was, that was set for the brain. You know, that would say it. Now, Samuel said something very important, you know. He said that, uh, and I'm going, I'm, I'm going to do that here, Samuel. Let me go back here. Look, Samuel, let's imagine, let's imagine because I don't draw, guys, you know. I don't draw, so please bear with me, okay. I don't draw, so you guys know, okay? Let's imagine that this is a brain, okay? And this is, so here we have the two parts of the brain, okay? In my case, in my case, I'm gonna put that this is the right side, okay? And I'm gonna put that this is the left side, right hemisphere, 
left hemisphere, okay? Now, you know what happens with the brain? Because the brain works with the nervous system, the nervous system, and there is a huge connection from the brain to your whole body. Now, look, behind your, behind your neck, um, here, check, check my picture. Look at me here, just right here. There, you see, on this part, there is a cross connection. There is a cross connection. When I say cross connection, I mean this. If this is the right side, imagine that this is the, imagine that this is the back of your neck, right? What the brain does is the following. Okay, it does like this, whoop, and it does like this, whoop, you see? So now, in reality, the left side controls the right side of your body, okay? So the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, and the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. There is a cross connection over there. That's right, when you are a baby or when you are young, your father, your, your mother, they protect that little part on the back of your neck because there, there is where we have the cross connection. And if something happens there, right? If you hit your head or here on this part, you might have permanent issues as a person. So that's right. I think teacher, you can kill somebody from there. Yes, yes, because there is where you have the cross connection and that's very dangerous. If you're falling, if you're falling, like if you sleep and you're falling, you will see that automatically, like nature, you're gonna do like this. That's what people normally do. Like when they're gonna fall, Easter. this part, automatically, naturally, you know? Yes, so, yes. If it, when teacher, mm -hmm. sorry. Yes. When when you are asleep and you have a bad position in the, with your neck and uh -huh. your neck, yeah, your head. And in the morning you feel this. You feel a a little pain. A little over pain. There. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So you guys know now many things about the brain, huh? This is not a language class. This is actually a medicine class, I guess. <laughs> so that was said about the brain, but it's very important that we know the importance of the brain, you know? And I'm not gonna talk about the problems with the brain, the, the Wernicke's area and all that, the broadcast area, no, because this is not medicine, this is English. So now we're gonna go to if you have the material over there, go to page 14. But if you don't have it, don't worry. I'm gonna uh, show you my screen so you can so you can know. Now, what we are going to do today, we're going to work with uh, one second here. We are going to work with the uh, degrees, degrees degrees of certainty, degrees of certainty. And we are gonna work with the mo model auxiliaries. That's the topic of today, okay? Degrees of certainty. When we talk about the degrees of certainty, this means how sure you are about something how sure you are that something is true or how sure you are that something is not true, okay? To, to say how sure you are about something, we use the model auxiliaries, model auxiliaries. Before we start with the model auxiliaries, do you know what an auxiliary is? a general definition of auxiliary. What is an auxiliary? If you guys know, auxiliary. 
we're talking about grammar, okay? We're talking about grammar. What is an auxiliary? The verb or the connector that, that support the, the word. And who is talking? Who is it? Uh, me. Who are you? Samuel? Where? No, I mean, you are talking, but I don't know who's talking because as I am showing you my screen, I cannot see you if you don't raise your hand. Okay, sorry. Right, so that's you, Samuel. Huh? You said, what did you say, sorry? Can you repeat that? Okay, sorry. Uh, the auxiliary is, is the word the little word that support that support the, the sentence okay that's well very good. yeah or that's good. connect two sentences very good very good very good that's right that's right you gave you gave a definition very close to what an auxiliary is yes in one way you you left but in the other way you are correct uh yeah an auxiliary is a word that helps okay it's a word that helps uh, creating a new grammar, you know, creating a new tense, a new time, right? So that's an auxiliary. Now, on this case, we are going to see auxiliaries, how we can work auxiliaries to express how sure you are. Now, we're gonna take, we're gonna divide the auxiliaries, okay? And we're gonna take those auxiliaries that we use, that we use when we are sure that something is true, okay? So number one, we're gonna use the auxiliaries when we are not sure that something is true or possible, okay? That's the first part. Now, uh, what are those auxiliaries then? Well, we have might, we have might, we have may, oh, I forgot the little might in there, sorry. And we have could. So we have three and we're gonna go, we're gonna go explaining them. So if you're not sure that something is true or possible, you use might, may, and could. Now pay attention to the to this. Might and may, it is the same thing. It has the same function. There is no difference between might and may. Okay. The only thing is that. People from uh, the United Kingdom, people from England, they normally use might. But people from the uh, United States, people from America, they normally use may. Okay? So basically, if you go to United States, the majority of people are going to say may, may, may. If you go to England, you will listen to people saying might, 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 okay? That's the only difference. But in meaning, there is no difference. Now, how can we use this? How can we use this? Uh, well, imagine that, imagine that today, this is your imagination, okay? Today we had our meeting, our English meeting. But we have the class, the meeting at 7 p.m., okay? But the teacher doesn't appear. You don't know where the teacher is. The meeting hasn't started. What do you think that happened? Well, you know what? The teacher might be sick. That's a possibility, right? But you're not sure if he is sick, you don't know, you don't have proof, you are only guessing, 
adivinando, right? So that's right. That's when we use might. When you say something that you are not sure about. The teacher might be sick. Well, we have meeting today at seven, it is seven already, and the teacher doesn't appear. Well, you know what? Let me, let me give you another example. The teacher, oh, okay, I'm gonna write it here. Hold on. You guys know the teacher, okay? The teacher might have issues with the internet. You guys know what, what it is, okay? I'm just writing that. So, but you don't know. You don't know if the teacher is sick or whether the teacher might have issues with the computer, you know? Oh, the teacher might be sleeping. The teacher might be sleeping. Maybe he went to sleep and he forgot. He didn't put the alarm. We don't know. You see, that's when you use might, you see? That's when you use might, when you are guessing about something, when you say something that you are not sure about, something that is not, maybe you're not sure if it is true or if it is possible. May, it is the same thing, the same way, okay? Uh, you can say, oh, Santo has a 911 T-shirt. That's the situation, right? Santo has a 911 t-shirt and you can say, well, he might work there. He may, sorry, we're using may. He may work there. He, he may work there. Remember when, when you use may, the auxiliary, Although we are working with a third person, which is he, we don't put the S on the verb, okay? Which is work, we don't use that. When you say may, you just put the verb in infinitive and that's it. So he may work there, but what other possibility do we have for Santo? Is if Santo has a 911 t-shirt, I said that he may work there, what other possibility do you think that they might be? Not necessarily that he worked there. He may have a friend that works there, right? A friend, maybe a friend gave him the t-shirt. That's another possibility. We say maybe, maybe, maybe. When you say maybe in English is when you are not sure about something. All of us use maybe, and maybe comes from this. Yes, Danny? Uh, we, we also can say maybe he could use his brother's teacher. Teacher. Okay, all right. Remember that we here, we are on May, okay? So you can say he might, he might, he may, sorry, where, uh, where? What do, why, why, do, why don't we say that may be his brother, his brothers? If we say that, oh God. Does it make sense to you like that? Like if we're talking about the t-shirt, that's another possibility. That may be his brother's t-shirt, you know? That's another possibility. But we don't know. We don't know. He may work there. That may be his brother. That may be his wife. We don't know. And that's it. That's how you use it. The same way that you use might is the same way that you use may. You use it when you're not sure. Now, could, could we use it for the same thing, but 
it is a little bit different. In could, we use it when we have options. When you have options. For example, imagine that you are going to a party today, okay? You're going to a party and you have a blue shirt, you have a green shirt, you have a red shirt, you have different shirts, okay? Now, you don't know which one you are going to wear. And you ask your girlfriend, your brother, your sister, you can ask, hey, um, Samuel, which shirt do you think I could use? I could use. Did you listen to that? Which shirt do you think I could use? That could means that I have different shirts because I didn't say which one. I just asked you which shirt do you think I could use? You know, that's when you have options. If you don't have options, you don't use could, you use may or you use might. For example, if I ask and say, hey, um, Danny, do you think I may use the blue shirt? You know what I mean? That I only have one shirt and that I could have a polo shirt or a t-shirt that I could use, right? But I'm, I'm talking about the shirts. I only have one. I, ha I have no options. That's the point. Imagine that you want to study, uh, that you finish high school or, and, and you're going, you trying to see where you're going to study, which university. We have La Uas, we have Utesa, we have OEM, but you don't know which one, right? Then you say, oh my God, you know what? I want to study, but I don't know which university I could go. I could, I could. You know why? Because you have more than one option. That's the point. So there you go. But when you say I could go, you don't know, right? You don't know which one. That's right. You don't know that if Utesa is better, if OEM is better, if Lawas is better, you will have to go there and analyze it and see it yourself. That's when you use could, when you have options. And that's it. That's it. Those are three modal auxiliaries that we use when we are not sure that something is true or possible. If, if you have a brother and your brother tells you that he's going maybe one day to your house, right? Okay, you know what? One of these days of the week, I'm going to your, I'm going to your house, okay? But you also expecting, you also expecting someone else and someone knocks at the door, okay? Bam, 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 bam. Then you say, oh, you know what? That might be my brother or that may be my brother. You know why? Because you're not sure if it is him. That's the point. Let me know if you have a question, guys, before I continue, because I am taking too long over here trying to explain everything, you know? I just want you to have a clear idea of how you can use the mother auxiliaries. Santo? Yes. Uh, also, uh, can we use a, a negative form, for example, if someone said, tell me, Santo, I want you to go with me to Santo Domingo. I say, I okay. can't. I say, why not? I say, I say, if I could, I would. Right, okay. Well, in this case, you, you're talking about could, right? Yes. Okay, in this case, what you said is not, is not actually the degrees of certainty. That's another grammar. If I could go, okay. if I could go, I would, you know, that's another, yeah. that's the, that's the conditional, that's the conditional grammar that we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, but don't Thank worry, you. later we're going to see the conditional after we see all this. <laughs> Thank, Thank, Thank you. Right. right. Now, but remember, this is when you are not sure, 
that something is true or possible. What about if we are, what about if we are almost, I didn't put we, you guys didn't tell me. Okay, when we are almost sure, this is the number two, okay? When we are almost sure that something is true or possible, which one do we use? We use must or have to, which is the same thing, okay? Must and have to has the same meaning on this case. And we use it when we are almost sure that something is true or possible. For example, let's take let's take a very let's take one person from here. Let's take Annie, Annie Vicente. Imagine that Annie Vicente told you that she is going to your house tomorrow at 9 a.m. in the morning. Annie has Annie has gone to your house before. And when she says that she will be there at nine, she is there at nine for sure, okay? Now, uh, today, right, it's nine o'clock and one person, or we don't know who is knocking at the door, right? Who do you think it is? Who do you think it is at the door? Annie told you yesterday that she'll be there at 9 a.m. When she says that she'll be there, she's there all the time. And now you listen to a person knocking at the door at 9 a.m. Who do you think it is, Santo? Yeah, I, 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 I can use mouse because I'm not sure. Are you sure? <laughs> you, well, let me tell you, listen to what I said. Annie, Annie told you that she's going to your house on Friday at nine in the morning. Annie is always there at 9 a.m. when she says that she's gonna be there at nine. She never misses. And today, right, is the day and at 9 a.m., Someone is knocking on your door. Who do you think it is? That's not only for you, Sam. Noraima, that's Ma also for you. Ma must be Annie because she. Must she's... be Annie. <laughs> it must be Annie, right? Santa. Yes, because he... she told me she come uh, today. Uh huh. It must yeah. be Annie. Yes. And not, and not only because Annie told you. It's because Annie before has told you the same thing and she's always there when she says so, you know? So you have proof. Yeah. You have you have data from before. I can yes. say that you have confidence, right? That she'll be there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, right. That's that's what I said, a teacher. I I said I must I must use must. must. Yeah. Yes, that's what I said at that's the beginning. Correct. That's correct. Well, let's do another one with has because we have must and we also have uh, have to. So we're gonna do one with have to. One example. Uh, yeah. Let's 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 take one example. Uh, Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, guys, let me give you another one. I don't know if the garbage truck passes by your house in a specific date, right? Or day, I may say. For example, here in the city, the garbage truck passes every Tuesday, every Thursday, and every Saturday. So three days a week, right? normally in the morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And you know, today is Saturday. It is in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning. 
and you listen to a big noise like a truck on the outside, what do you think it is? The Gavi truck has mm -hmm. passing. Okay. Okay. But if you say has passed, it's not it's not a model auxiliary anymore. It's another sentence. Remember that this has to be that's something else that I want to tell you. These model auxiliaries can be only used in the present or in the future, not in the past. present or future. Okay. So you listen to the garbage truck. Uh, well, not the garbage truck because you don't know. It's a big truck making a lot of noise. You know it's a truck because of the noise. So today is Saturday morning, eight o'clock. And I say that that has to be the garbage. You can say that it, it, it has to be the garbage truck. That has to be the garbage truck, you know? When do you use has to or must when you are almost sure that something is true or that something is possible, you know? That's when we have data, when we have information, when we have uh, backup information to justify that, you know? So it, remember, because if you're not sure about what it is, if you don't have any information from before, then you cannot use must or has to, all right? We're gonna have an exercise. Uh, we're gonna have an exercise now when I finish planning the last part. So remember, we have model auxiliaries when you are not sure, and we have their might, may, and could, we also have model auxiliaries when you are almost sure that something is true and that is must or have to. So we are missing one. You know which one we are missing? We are missing the auxiliary that we use when we are almost sure that something is not true or possible, okay? And when we are almost sure that something is not true or possible, we use can't. Sorry. Can't. Okay, and we're gonna take Santo as an example on this case. You guys know Santo is a very quiet person. He's even Christian, he doesn't drink. You know, he doesn't visit drinking places and because that's his personality. And you guys see a person, you see a person uh, in, in La Bomba, you know La Bomba, right? Where people go to drink. I know every, in every part we have Bombas here, a drink. And you see, you see a person there drinking he looks like Santo. That might be his twin, you know? He looks like Santo and you there, you drinking. You don't get close to him, but from far you see him and you say, oh shit, that's Santo. And he said he was Christian, blah, blah, blah. Then the next day you get together guys and Albania says, you know what? I saw Santo drinking in La Bomba. And people know, people know that Santo is Christian, that Santo doesn't drink and that Santo, it is impossible that was Santo there because he never goes to, that, to those places. You know what you say? That can't be him. You know why? Because you have information that lets you know that that was not Santo. Santo doesn't drink. Santo is a serious guy, he's Christian. He has a family. Nobody has seen him before drinking in such places. You know, 
that's right you can say that that can't be him right right and, and like that like when you when you have information that something is not true when you're almost sure that something is not true that's when you use can't that's when it when, when you use it And that's it. You know, in life, we have many situations where, where people tell you things about others and you say, no, that's not true. It can't be him. It can't be him. It can't be true. And that's what it is. Now, guys, so as a very easy summary, as a very easy summary, because we're gonna finish the explanations now. And you've been listening to me for a long time and you've been quiet there. But Joris, do you belong to this class? What do you wanna ask? You raise your hand, but Joris. Well, I don't know. But it's no, teacher, it's okay. It's okay? <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Now guys, look at this. I'm gonna show you something right now. And I want you to think if, if we are going to use may, may, must, or can't. Remember, may is when you are not sure that something is true. Must is when you are almost sure that something is true. And can't is when you are almost sure that something is not true. Okay, so can't is negative, must is positive, and may is, you know, between that you don't know, that you're not sure. So let me show you this, let me show you this. This is on your book, okay? This is there in the book. Now, I want you to see, I want you to take, and we're gonna finish when we do this. I want you to take your time, let me give you, um, let me see who's writing. Who's this? Oh, okay, very good. <laughs> very nice. I don't know. Okay, guys, let's do this one because I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you another exercise. The the other exercise is gonna be the homework. So let's take, let's take, I'm gonna give you five minutes. You see, we're gonna do this exercise here now. You don't have to copy everything. You know what you have to do? Read, read the sentence. You see one, two, three, four. You read it and you decide if it is, if it is might, must, or can't. You gotta use those three, okay? Let me see if I can fix this, hold on. Let me see if I can put it in a way that you guys can see it. Give me a second here. Yes, you can see it there, you see? So we're gonna work with this, guys. Look, you're gonna put in there, if it is might, must, or can't, just that. Might, must, or can't. You're gonna read the sentence and you're gonna decide. Remember, might when you are not sure. Must, when you are almost sure that something is true, and can't, when you are almost sure that something is not true. So right now it's 8.01, at 8.06, I'm gonna start asking. So I'm gonna go mute so you guys can work. I'm gonna leave it there. At 8.06, I start asking you.
I gave you time, guys. 8.07, I'll give you more. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna go one by one, and, and then uh, we're gonna try to justify. Now, when I say we, I mean me. Okay, so all right. Now I'm gonna start reading. I'm gonna read the first two that there is nothing there, and I don't know who wanna participate. Raise your hand if you want, so I can give you the numbers. Uh, Samuel, you said you finished, so you have the number one. <clears throat> I don't know yes. who else finished. Abania, you have the number two. Noraima, you have the number three. Get your numbers because then I'm gonna forget, okay? And Annabelle, you have the number four. Santo, you have the number five. So let's stop it there, then we, we restart, okay? So let me start reading, I say, what's the matter, Sue? Mr. Fox hasn't arrived yet. He's always on time for work. Number one. Me, teacher? Yes. It's me. This the, the third person. Yes, you are Bob. You have the number one. Look, number one is there. You see? Yes. So, do you want to read? You want to start reading the the whole sentence? Okay. Uh, he may he maybe. So he may be in a traffic jam, right? Yes. Okay, very good. We use may may in this case because you explain you explain that the may use is used in the you, third person. You, you're not sure. You're not sure. Don't worry. That's why you say it because they're not sure. You will see. Now we have number two. Yes. I don't know to who I gave it, so number two. No. That he can't be in this uh, car is at the mechanic. Okay, can you, do you wanna repeat that? No. No. Uh -huh. Can, no, that can't be it, his car is at the mechanic. Okay, very good, very good. Yeah, that's correct. Can't, you are correct. Yeah. Why yes. can't? Because we have information here. Look, the car is a mechanic, right? Yeah. So that's why it is impossible that he is in a traffic jam. You know, traffic jam is un tapón, right? So he cannot be there. Good. Number three. Who has? Me, teacher, Naraima. Yes. Then, then he may be on the subway. Then he may be on the subway. You see, if you notice, guys, this person is guessing. Bob is guessing because Bob, in the first one, Bob said, don't worry, he may be in a traffic jam, right? Then Sue says, no, that can't be it. His car is at the mechanics. Then Bob comes again and says, then he may be on the subway, you see? Bob is guessing, Bob doesn't know anything. Now let's see, he says, oh, come on. He never takes the subway. Then who has number four? Me. Yes. Um, it says, did you try calling him? He might be sick. Did you try calling him? He may be sick. You see, that's Bob again. It's Bob again, Bob is guessing, Bob doesn't know anything, right? So he may be sick. Well, he was fine yesterday, just a little nervous. Nervous about what? And now we have five, six, seven, and eight. Let's see who has those. Five, six, seven, and eight. Let me see if there is a new person with a hands up that I can give them the, uh, 
the opportunity. Okay. If you guys don't raise your hands up, I'm not, I'm not gonna call your name. I'm gonna work with the people that are active here, you know, and I, I don't wanna force anybody. So, okay, now we continue with you, Noraima. You will go to the number five. And I don't know who else, there is nobody else I see. So they don't know what is coming for next. So don't worry, go on. Right. Oh, okay. Hey, Albania, you go to number six. Give me a second, Noraima. Albania, you go to number six. And go on, uh, Noraima. Okay. Uh, the accountants discovered that a huge sum of money is missing. It okay. must be as much as million of dollars. Right. Oh, let me see who's. Let me see who's writing. Who's that, Adrian? <laughs> right. Okay. So very good. What? What? The accountants discovered a huge sum of money that is missing, right? And then um, they said, it must be as much as a million dollars. You know why we say that we use must and no may? There are two reasons why we use must and not may in there. Number one, normally, when we use expressions like this, look at the, the mark at the end, the sign, the, the punctuation mark, you see, exclamation. When we use that, we normally use must. That's the first reason, okay? Now, the second reason is that a huge, huge sum of money. Guys, a huge, an enormous amount of money. We're talking about millions. We're not talking about thousands, right? So basically, that's why we say, well, you know what? It must be as much as a million dollars if it is a huge sum of money. And that's the second reason why we have information that is a huge sum of money. That's, the, that's one reason. And the second reason is when we normally use, or when we use the exclamation mark, we normally use must on this type of conversations. Now you know, huh? now you know. Number six, Albania, what do you have? I have, what there may be a mistake. Check the computer. Okay. There may be a mistake. Check the computer. Yeah. What about if I tell you that it is must? What if I would say that it is must? No, teacher. Um. No, you can tell because you have the teacher. No, but listen, according to the explanation that I gave you on the number five, there is a reason why the number six is must. Okay, okay, yeah. What there must be a mistake. Check the computer. Now, uh -huh. yes. Why yeah. do you think it is must? Um. Because it's a possibility, I don't know. You didn't pay attention to me when I was playing, <laughs> but don't worry. But Joris is going to help. But Joris, what do you say? Because it is an exclamation mark. Exclamation. So look, you have the mark in here. You see that little mark, the exclamation mark? Yeah. When we use that, we normally put mark. That was the oh, okay. that now, I gave you here. Okay, now I know. Sorry, because sometimes I lose you because my internet is not good. That's okay, don't so, worry. Don't yeah. worry, I just hear you in the half. <laughs> That's okay, <laughs> don't worry. Then we have, okay. then we have, we did, the money is gone. 
Who has number seven? I guess you like that, Noraima. You like this. Yes, yes I like it, teacher. <laughs> what do you have in there? Well, here I have, um, do you think we may have a thief on, in the office? Right. Do you think we may? You know why we use may? You know why? Because. Yes, I know. Yes, go yeah. on, go on. Because we make it. We make a question. Oh, first, because we are asking a question. Well, that's true. That's correct. And second, there is something in there. Let's see if if Noraima knows. Noraima, what do you see in there besides question? Because they are using a verb uh, of probably. Probably. It's, it's probability? Thing. I don't know. Probability. Yes, yes. Right. Probably. Guys, look, whenever you think you are not sure, right? Like, do you think we, do you think, if I, if I ask you, do you think it's because I am not sure, right? And look, let me show you because you're going to read it. You're going to read it in your house. Look at this. Look at the explanation. In questions, may and might, usually follow the phrase, do you think? Did you see that? In questions, may and might usually follow the phrase, do you think? And that's what we have here. Look, do you think? So whatever comes after has to be may or might. And that's the reason why. Then let me continue then. Hey, wait a minute. The money is missing and Mr. Fox is missing. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Who has number eight? Uh, Albania, what do you say? Oh, Ivania is gone. Ivania, if you're talking, you have your mute on. You have your mute on. Ah, uh, okay. I say, uh, yes, Fox must be on plane with the million dollars. Yes. Guys, why do you think Fox took the money? This is a final question. Why do you think Fox took the money? Right? The money is gone. He okay. the what was that? Sorry, can you repeat that? Me, Naraima. I think he bought the ticket plane. Aha, uh -huh, right. So he bought the plane ticket with it, huh? And what information do you have? Santo, are you there? I see your hands up. Yes, sir. Because, uh, like you said, we have an exclamation mm -hmm. point that right. we should use at the most. <laughs> you got the trick already, Santo, huh? You got the trick. <laughs> so yeah, Santo is right. When you have the exclamation mark in here, you normally use must. Now, let me tell you guys. So I know that we were using the conversation like a breakdown, so we're gonna finish. But see this, look, let's go back to the whole conversation and let's get, let's get um, a logical conclusion, okay? So he says that Fox is, hasn't arrived yet and Fox is always on time for work, okay? Now, look at this. Fox, Fox is not sick. Fox was fine yesterday. He was a little nervous. Why? Why was he nervous? Because the accountant discovered a huge amount of money that he was missing, right? Then uh, they checked the computer. They, um, they actually acknowledged that the money was gone. So think about this. Fox never misses. Fox misses. Fox 
is gone. The money is gone. So who took the money then? Fox. Fox. Fox took the money. You Fox took the money. So Fox must be on a plane with a million dollars. You know why? Because, because we have enough information to say that Fox took the money. Fox never misses to work. Fox was nervous yesterday because the accountant discovered that the money was gone. So imagine. So that's how that's how we use that's how we use the model auxiliaries. You see, when you don't have information, when you are not sure, you use may or might. When you are sure, then you use must if it is positive. Because when you are sure that something is not true, then you use can't as the example that we saw here. Look, check this, check this. Uh, look at this here where, where, where I'm just putting this little shadow. He says, don't worry, he might be in a traffic jam. You see what Sue says? No, that can't be it, impossible because his car is at the mechanic. You cannot be in a tapon if you don't have a car. That's impossible, right? So that's how- a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know. <laughs> so that's what it is, guys, that's it. Then the homework that you're going to have, please wait, wait for the homework to be on the platform to do it, okay? I'm just gonna tell you right now, what the homework is going to be, okay? I'm not telling you to do it now, wait for it. Now the homework is going to be this one, page 15 and page 16 here, you see? Uh, here, what you are going to do is, and pay attention to this, what you are going to do is that you're going to write two conclusions. Guys, conclusions, conclusions, you write it with must. Only, only must or has to, because conclusions is when you are almost sure that something is true, okay? So what you're gonna do is that you are going to have here certain situations, certain sentences that you're gonna read it. For example, look at this. You're gonna, you're gonna do two sentences. You're gonna do one positive, and one negative. Look at this. Look at this. He says, Tom has lost his appetite and he spends all the time, sorry, all his time looking out of the window and sighing, looking at, right? Now we have one positive conclusion is he must be in love right? Because he, if he lost his appetite and he's always looking at the window, he must be in love, positive or negative. He must be sick. You see? Being in love is good. Being sick is bad. So you have a positive conclusion and you have a negative conclusion. To be negative conclusion, you don't have to put must not. No, 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 no. You put must and whatever comes after to be a negative thing, you know? Like for example here, he must be sick. Being sick is something negative, something bad, something, uh, how do you call it? Pessimist, that's what it is. Then here you're gonna have A, B, C, D, E. You're gonna have George doesn't earn a lot of money, but he's driving a new car. What you're going to do is you're gonna give a, a positive, conclusion and then a negative conclusion, you know? Maybe he's doing something wrong or maybe he's doing something right that he, that he doesn't get a lot of money but he's driving a car. So guess what? That's your job. That's it guys, we have one hour and 27 minutes here. Oh my God, this, this. Yes. Oh my God, teacher. Oh, sorry, I put you on mute. I'm sorry. You can go back. 
<laughs> I say, oh my God, teacher. <laughs> yes. So guys, uh, that's it. Do you have any questions? This was a lot of information. So what you have to do now is go to the book, to the page 14 and page 15, study, review, watch the video again when I upload it. And that's your part, you know? So that, Thank you, teacher. Yeah. So I will see you later then. See you tomorrow. But Joris, you have a question? Yeah, teacher. That homework is for sure here in the next class or for the class? You see, guys, I don't like to tell you about homeworks because of that. I'm going to answer your question. The homework is going to be for when you see it in the platform, <laughs> when you see it there, you start doing homework, you know? So wait for it, you know? You just wait for it and then you have it. I'll see you then, guys. Take care.